Um, so, um, so actually I've geared this talk for a general audience and I'm not going to spend a lot of time in the techno technological um, buildup of the biolayer interferometry. I'll just use it as a um, uh, description of how we actually detect this. So what we're, what we're doing in our laboratory is catching the seeds of protein destruction. Now what is that? What do we mean by that? Okay, so what do these diseases have in common? Parkinson's, ALS, cystic fibrosis, emphysema, so there's some, some disease uh, uh, people that are, that are affected by emphysema and they've never smoked a cigarette in their life. Uh, frontal lobe dementia is now becoming uh, a topic, particularly in the NFL, right? Tauopathies and so forth. Friedrich's ataxia. I actually had a, um, um, uh, my wife's uh, niece and nephew died from this particular disease and childhood disease. Of course, all of us are fearful of this particular um, entity here, Alzheimer's. And I think one of the worst diseases I've ever heard of is actually a um, fatal familial insomnia, and that is uh, you um, you don't go to you don't, you actually stay awake for now about six months to sixteen months and never go back to sleep again. That's turns out to be a prion disease. So what? And also now it's turned out that there are multiple cancers and even type 2 diabetes that are linked to this particular phenomenon. And that is protein folding diseases. These are all linked. They're all categorized by protein folding, either abnormal accumulations or, and or removal of these misfolded proteins. So this is actually a very, very, uh, now becoming realized, but it's a very common event. And in fact, any, at one, any one time, 30 to 50 percent of the humans suffering from any disease at any one, you know, one time uh, arise from protein folding defects or protein stability issues. And this is related to folding because this includes protein toxins that rearrange themselves, refold. Anthrax, sepsis, viral invasion, it's all around us. So, what do we want to do? So the topics and, and questions and topics, we might get to this and we might not, but you know, the, what I want you to take home, of course, is the, the importance of proteins. These are machines of life, right? They're not perfect machines. And that's a, that's a key point. And then the other aspect is that I want you to pay attention to is, of course, how important protein stability is in relation to disease or, and life and say, it, itself, the role of dynamics. Proteins are not just static entities, right? They're moving around, they're shaking, they're, you know, you've got WAGs, you've got, you know, uh, all the harmonics that are going into that, bending, wagging, so forth. So why do some proteins occur? Also, this is another issue. Why do proteins occur as we age, some protein folding diseases occur as we age. Why don't we get Alzheimer's early on? Why do we get them later? So, and this, I'll point out the role of uh, life's protein centuries. So, uh, this is just an overview slide. A lot of you have seen this before, but just DNA encodes. Um, you can actually transcri uh, transcribe that with messenger RNA. Ribosome translates that into a protein. You have these added in and one at a time and this, this protein actually is, uh, grows out of this ribosome and then you have this final fold. This is actually the second uh, code, you know, secret code of, of life, right? How, how does this sequence encode that final fold and so forth? But uh, also, we have uh, viruses that are sloppy at this stage. They actually reverse, they go, go from messenger RNA back to DNA. It's one of the reasons why you get a lot of viral um, uh, mutations and so forth. And one of the reasons, you know, evolution is such a uh, messy uh, event, of course, is that this is not perfect. Um, 
Systems biology, we have, we can go from the genome to the transcriptome. We can look at all these that, that transcribe messenger RNAs. We can actually look at the entire proteome, and those output is the metabolome, right? Everything that, you know, our output and so forth. But what I'm going to focus on is this particular region or realm. So when we look at a cell, so this is a cross-section of a cell, they are absolutely chock full of proteins, right? So this is a snapshot. This is David Goodsell's artist rendition. Everybody can see this? Artist rendition of, uh, this is the uh, cell surface here. There's a lot of uh, uh, glycoproteins here. This is what this shrubbery is. But then you have actin filaments and, and so forth that actually, and, and cytoskeletal elements. Here's a ribosome down here. And then as we, we travel through the cell, you, you can see that there's just absolutely chock full of proteins and, and so forth. So uh, here's the endoplasmic reticulum. That's full of uh, proteins and so forth. Um, and this, uh, each one of these areas can, can be the source of a, fo a folding defect or folding disease. Um, here's a Golgi apparatus. And we, we go into the mitochondria. Mitochondria are our our fuel source, our, our actual our power plants in our cells. It's very important to keep these things alive, right? Or keep these things functioning. Um, and these are the ones that actually start going bad when we, and uh, uh, these neurological diseases and so forth, Alzheimer's and so forth. So as you, could, you, you punch through here, you can actually end up in the nucleus, and here's the nuclear, um, the um, chromatin packing with the DNA and so forth. So proteins are essential, vital. And even in the blood, of course, here's one of the ones that we're actually always using, antibodies. So any of these commercials you hear, you, know, you see like Humira and uh, so forth, if they have an AB at the end of their, their scientific name, that's actually an antibody. And that's one of these antibodies here. And there's all kinds of, there's fib um, fibrin and uh, albumin and so forth. So there's, these are actually chock full. So this is just a, um, a uh, schematic of the sizes of these of these proteins, and some of them are rather large, but not as large as, for instance, a rhinovirus here. This is actually a, a protein coat. Uh, you have uh, proteins that in, insert into that lipid bilayer, that fatty layer that actually surrounds our cells and so forth. Here's these exterior proteins. Protein I'm going to talk about uh, later on is this one here, and it's about the size of a ribosome. It's called a chaperonin. Here's a muscle and actin, um, uh, actin filament here, this is tubulin, so the myosin here is the myosin heads that actually walk along the actin. So proteins are all over the place, and they are machines of life, right? So when you look at the protein itself, um, as I mentioned before, there's a, you know, it's kind of nondescript if we have a, a, a surface view of this, and then we fill in our van der Waals uh, um, uh, radii of, 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 the, of the residues and so forth. Here, as you can see, a phenylalanine and so forth, but that's not too informative either. We can do stick diagrams. <clears throat> I think uh, oh, Jane Richardson was the one that actually um, uh, did this, where she actually uncovered the beauty of the fold of these proteins using a, she, she's a biophysicist and an artist at the same time, so she, she actually could draw these, these are beta sheets and alpha helices and so forth, and there's regular patterns of these folds. So this is this three-dimensional structure of that pro particular protein. So um, our sequence determines structure, of course, and that's the, um, uh, um, the second, uh, uh, secret of uh, the uh, code of life and so forth. How does this sequence actually dictate that particular fold? Um, and this is actually um, uh, Christian Amundsen won a Nobel Prize in 1972 in chemistry for demonstrating that this is actually follows a nice free energy relationship that you can unfold and refold these things. Um, and all the all the information is encoded in this sequence. So sequence specifies structure and also function. The protein folding problem, of course, is the second half of the genetic code. So sequence has to be determined experimentally, and we, we actually can, uh, one, what a lot of what active area is trying to figure out, okay, if we can look at the sequence, what is the function? Well, that's kind of difficult to do. So we're, we stuck at, we're, we're, we're actually in reality space here. 
So all the folds of the proteins, there's all kinds of different um, folds of proteins. There's, one, there's some that are beta sheet, beta barrels, alpha beta barrels, and they have regular shapes, alpha beta. This is an alpha helix here, this is a beta sheet here. So they have these regular patterns. And they're dictated, here's a primary structure, they're dictated, this is the backbone of the, of the protein, this is an amide bond, and uh, um, um, peptide bond and the re uh, residues here actually are, have various um, uh, properties. Some of them are actually very hydrophilic. That is, they're very easy to dissolve in water. Others are hydrophobic. They're uh, not as soluble in water. And this is where then some of them are amphipathic. They can be either either, either or. And um, here's the hydrophobic uh, residues uh, I just mentioned. I couldn't see it down here. So these are amphipathic, and these are the hydrophobic residues. And it turns out when we look at the overall fold, here's the alpha helix and here's the beta sheets, as I mentioned before. But when we slice through a protein, here's the hydrophobic core, right? So all the hydrophobics are in the interior on the hydrophilics are on the exterior. That's dictating the fold of these proteins. So it's a simple, uh, this is a simplified view, uh, but um, <clears throat> as you can well, uh, you, you put uh, these hydrophobic, uh, it's like oil and water, right? So basically you can see that these shield, these, these uh, residues actually shield against you know, water. And then when I, when, uh, just to give you a sense, this is a 19 picosecond time lapse of cavities that appear and disappear in a fluctuating, oh, sorry, sorry, back here. So, I can't see, I gotta put my magnifiers on. <laughs> okay, backspace, okay. Well, actually, what's... Okay, that's the membrane. Oh, that's one more. Okay, enter. Oh. I think I have to. Click it, maybe. Mm. Really good. Yeah, I mean, it it just shows the uh, shows the movement of the protein. If I can. Well, it's unpick a second. It's already happened. No, it's nineteen. <laughs> Okay, so there it is. So this is actually cavities up here. And this, this is 19 picoseconds. This thing's shaking and wiggling and moving and so forth. I just wanted to give you the impression.